Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Welcome to the Nano Hub U course Thermal Energy at the Nano Scale. I'm Tim Fisher, and we're starting week five, which is the last week of the course. Uh, this week we'll focus on uh, the part of the problem that we really haven't dealt with yet in any great detail, and that is carrier scattering. And uh, hopefully we'll get through to the end and kind of have a complete picture of uh, thermal conductance and thermal conductivity. Just to remind you quickly, thermal conductance is the ratio of the heat flow rate to the temperature difference. And we use our model system to describe this. That's a, a device that's bridging between a hot and cold reservoir. In this case, when we calculate thermal conductance, actually the hot's not that much hotter than the cold. We, we make the temperature difference very small uh, so that we can kind of linearize uh, any, any temperature dependencies. Um, and for phonons, that's expressed as an integral in frequency space in general that's shown here. Uh, and for electrons, typically we express the, the thermal conductance as an en energy space integral. We, we're going to take a step back and go inside side of the integral quickly. Um, the integrand, if you look back at the previous slide, you can see that the integrand could be expressed generally as a product of terms that's a constant. Actually, that constant was in front of the integral. Multiplied by m, which is our number of modes, and then there's an energy term, e minus mu, for phonons, mu is zero. Um, and, and then the transmission function, that's the script t, multiplied by the temperature derivative of the, uh, the distribution function. So one of the you know, serious issues about this expression is that all of these terms, except the constant, can depend on, on energy, and in general they do, um, and, or frequency if we're talking about phonons. Uh, this, uh, the spectral dependence of the transmission function is something we really haven't dealt with, um, and its temperature dependence. Uh, that's also, that also can be important. And it can depend on conditions. It can depend, in some cases, on uh, on boundaries, uh, on uh, defects that are inside the material, and so we have you know, quite a bit of work to do to kind of to uh, flesh out all of the different possibilities for this transmission function. Today, we're just going to make some general arguments about what form it might take, and then connect that to uh, to thermal conductivity. We're going to start with a, a postulate. So let's say that inside of our device, uh, on average, a carrier moves a certain distance uh, between scattering events. And we've already, we've already discussed this a little bit when it came to kinetic theory. We called that the scattering length or the mean free path. You'll see that. And we would generally expect that the transmission probability, that's really what the transmission function is, um, at least if we're talking about a single type of carrier. Uh, so this transmission probability would increase the longer the mean free path is, and it would decrease uh, the longer the device is. So we might make a, a quick uh, postulate that the transmission function would be uh, the ratio of the mean free path to the device length. And that it's simply intuitive at this point in time. We're not proving anything. Um, we'll go back and plug this in a little bit later. But there's a problem with this with this approximation. And that shows up on this slide. The problem is that as the device length goes to zero, the, that model that we just had on the previous slide uh, would suggest that the transmission function goes to infinity. But as I said before, the transmission function, you can kind of think of it as a, as a probability. And so it can't go to infinity. It, its maximum should be one in general. There are some other cases where it can be greater than one if we're count if we're lumping together different uh, branches of phonons, for example. But for now, we'll think of this this transmission function as a simple probability. And so we'll make a correction to our intuition, and we'll just add a, a term in the denominator that, so that the denominator becomes the mean free path plus the device length. You'll see that when we do that very simple thing, 
we find that as the device length goes to zero, the transmission function goes to unity or one, as we would expect, expect for a ballistic conductor. And then further, if the length gets very large relative to the mean free path, then our intuition from the previous slide uh, is, is uh, upheld because in an approximate sense, the transmission function will just be the ratio of the mean free path to the length uh, because the, the extra term in the denominator of mean free path will be very small compared to the length. So let's take a look now at the consequences for thermal conductivity. Um, thermal conductivity is related to thermal conductance uh, in, in the way that's shown in the top equation here. It's basically the thermal conductance normalized by some geometric factors. So that's the length, that's the length in the direction of the transport uh, divided by area. And I put a put single quotes around area because area depends on dimensionality. Area means uh, meter squared in, for three-dimensional problems, but for two-dimensional problems, the area is the cross-sectional length. And then for one-dimensional problem, it really doesn't have, area has, has no meaning. So if we go ahead and, and express this thermal conductivity, that's kappa, in terms of the thermal conductance integral, all we're doing is, is taking that thermal conductance integral and putting it into the equation that we have at the top of, of this slide, we see that we can form you know, a fairly simple expression, except for the fact that we, we now have to kind of divide out um, different terms in the, uh, in, especially in the, in the number of modes, that's M, uh, because we, our expectation, at least for diffusive transport, would be that the thermal conductivity should depend on neither the length or the area. It should be geometry independent. It should, in other words, be a property of a material. So we'll start to break down that uh, that term M. If you'll recall back uh, a couple chapters ago, or last chapter actually, uh, the number of modes could be expressed in terms of an area. Again, it's the same area that we had before. It depends on dimensionality. Uh, multiplied by uh, a mode density. So M sub lowercase d, uppercase d, that means the, the, the lowercase d represents the dimensionality of the problem, one, two, or three. And then what we'll do in addition to that is we'll assume that our transmission is diffusive. So we'll, we won't worry about any ballistic effects for now. We'll pick those up a little bit later, but generally speaking, for, for if, if we want to derive thermal conductivity, it, it really only has meaning if we have a diffusive problem. So we'll take that. Uh, the transmission function is the ratio of the mean free path to the device length. And we go ahead and plug in these two, um, these, these two factors, M, the, the expanded expression for the number of modes, and our approximation for the transmission function. And you'll see that what happens, and this is really important, is that indeed the geomet geometric terms in the thermal conductivity equation cancel. Uh, the area canceled with the area from the number of modes and the length canceled with the length from the transmission function. So this should make us feel pretty good. Um, we now have a, an integral expression for thermal conductivity where we've really defined, in essence, all of the terms. And what we're going to do last is we'll expand this, uh, this uh, mode density term. That's M sub DD. And if you'll recall that, we found that it was actually the product of uh, constant pi and the average group velocity, and that average dependent on, depended on dimensionality, multiplied by the density of states for the given dimensionality. And you'll notice that in, in the last, in, in this part of the, the lecture, we're, we're really focusing on phonons, but similar things apply for electrons, where we would be doing these things in energy space instead of frequency space. So now the last approximation that we're going to make is that the group velocity uh, and the mean free path do not depend on frequency. And just remember at the beginning of this lecture, I said that the transmission function can be highly energy dependent. And so, you know, this is, this is an approximation that is somewhat dubious, but we're going to make it to connect it to something we've done before. 
when we when we pull out these factors, that's the average group velocity and the mean free path or scattering length capital lambda, we find that really the thermal conductivity turns into the product of three main terms. One of them is the group velocity. In this case, it's the average group velocity in the direction of interest. Uh, and the mean free path, that's capital lambda. And then that entire integral, if you go back from when we were studying uh, specific heat, that's actually just the specific heat of a, of a single phonon branch in, in the dimensionality, wh whichever dimensionality of the problem you're interested in. That's the, the lowercase d in the subscript on the density of states. So we have, again, this product of a velocity term, a mean free path, and a specific heat. And I hope at this point that that, um, that, that rings a bell because back when we were doing kinetic theory, we, had, we found that we could express the thermal conductivity. In that case, we also made some approximations uh, like we've done here about the nature of scattering and whether it was energy or temperature dependent. But the, um, the products are the same. The specific heat, group velocity, mean free path um, in the, from the kinetic theory. And we find, again, I've, I've simply rewritten um, this uh, in the Landauer form, which is for, uh, again, with the, the approximation of, of simple diffusive scattering, we find that, again, those, those terms show up here. And the factors of, you know, we have a one-third multiplying the group velocity. Here we have uh, in, the, in the kinetic theory, then we have one-half times the average of the group velocity. The constants aren't exactly right because we didn't really make some ge geometric arguments in the Landauer uh, approximation. Remember, we really just postulated a general form for the scattering term in that case, and we didn't worry so much about the geometry, whereas when we did kinetic theory, we were looking at the, the distance uh, uh, of the mean free path in the direction of interest. So there's a few differences, but certainly the, this general concept of thermal conductivity being expressible as a product of velocity, mean free path, and specific heat holds up from Landauer theory as it did for kinetic theory. And I, I hope that that gives you a little bit of confidence that what we're doing here does, is, is fairly general. We'll pick up uh, in, in the subsequent lectures on some more complicated transmission functions. Uh, this one was as simple as, as we could find. Again, it's not temperature or energy dependent. And we'll find that, uh, unfortunately, for most scattering processes, uh, that's not going to be the case. But for an approximation, this isn't bad. I'll see you next time.